Say it with me, everybody. Same old terps. They'll let the sounds of Dr. Disrespect take over. Just listen to the lyrics for a few seconds. I don't even know why do we try anymore Terpsville Flex Zone family the Maryland Turpins lay a pterodactyl Turpin size egg they wet the bed at home in front of 30,000 fans 37 to 10 the Northwestern and remain winless in the Big Ten. And now the question is with another loss and the way their schedule lines up, will they even be bowl eligible at three and three? You gotta get the six wins. Will they even be able to get there? I have no idea, Church. I have no idea, Flex on Family. But if you're watching this video, please subscribe. I'd love to hear from you down below in the comment section. It helps us out tremendously. Your thoughts on the Maryland Turks, the game last night, or anything else. It doesn't even have to be Maryland Turks related. Just leave us your favorite emoji. It helps us tremendously. Hit that like button, leave us a thumbs up, and as always, hit the bell. We do Maryland content all year around. Football is not making it any easier, but we are not going anywhere. Win, lose, or goofy like they were last night, we will be here covering this team. Maryland committed four, count it, four turnovers, and which was a season they actually were one of the leaders in the nation in turnover margin. So they were the opposite of what they usually are. We've obviously seen them get turnovers and not be able to capitalize for whatever reason, penalties, offensive line play, a, a myriad of things. But last night just was the, I don't even know what to call it. They laid an egg. They wet the bed. They didn't even get out of bed. They didn't show up. Were they expecting the game to be tonight at 8 on Saturday? Or were they expecting it to be later in the year? Or were they not supposed to be there? Was something happened before the pregame meal? Was the meal did something like in Space Jam where it took all their powers away? Northwestern comes in here and beats them 37 to 10. I actually, all inclusive purposes, was late watching the game so i was catching up and watching the game and then i see the score is 17 nothing i'm like what is this a joke is this a game from two or three years ago is this college football 24. they they got their ass whooped and it's simple as that and it's it's really alarming like I said in my preview, it's year six of Loxley, his regime. I have not seen any difference, really, when it comes to the product on the field from a discipline standpoint. The self-inflicted penalties, the self-inflicted wounds, it's not been good. Jake Losh, the quarterback, and Cam Porter rush for it. First half touchdowns for Northwestern. The Wildcats, who are now three and three, got their first Big Ten win. They were actually outgained in yards, three fifty-five to two eighty-three. Billy Edwards did rush for a touchdown, but he he really couldn't get much going on the ground. We actually were calling for Billy to run a little more in this offense, which he did, and I think he only ended up with fifty-nine total yards. I'll get the numbers in a second, but that blind side hit by. Carmine Bastone on the last possession pretty much might have might have hurt Billy Edwards. I wonder how he feels today as he recovers, gets in the ice tub. How is he recovering? Because 
that was a hell of a hit. He's going to be feeling that one. And if he has to miss some time, I would not be surprised. Now, I don't think he is, but he's going to be feeling that for a couple of days to at least next week. Three fourth quarter turnovers. And the pretty much the fourth quarter was the difference. The final 15 minutes, they outscored Maryland. Northwestern did 20 to 3. And 17 of those 20 points was all takeaways. They pretty much turned the game over. They gave the game away, and Northwestern took it from them. Their coach, I got to give a credit. We talk about coaching and how coaching is a big impact on play and sports. David Braun, last year with Northwestern, the end of the season, he turned them around. They beat Maryland. They had a winning record this season, getting them to 500. I think he told them before the game they were talking about on the broadcast, we're not leaving out of here. We're not getting back on that plane without being three and three. So he challenged his players. He led his players in the battle. He had a wonderful game plan, I think. He stopped Maryland, made them pretty much one-dimensional, took advantage of their weaknesses. And offensively, they surprised me. I didn't think they had this in me offensively, in them offensively. But when you turn a ball over four times, three times in the fourth quarter, what what can you do? You're going to lose. You're going to really more time to not lose because most teams, not Maryland, when they get four turnovers, they're going to capitalize and get points. They got 17 points in the fourth quarter off turnovers, and you see what happens there. They got off to a fast start, and Edwards did have a <clears throat> Edwards did have a one yard touchdown run, and that was on fourth and one fourth and goal, and that was a 16 play drive. Jake Howes did have a 31-yard field goal on the first play of the fourth quarter, which is an 18-play possession, kind of which he got points in the red zone there with a touchdown. But Loxley was quoted as saying, we're here to build this team to compete to win championships. That's what he said, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's what he was quoted as saying. I'm going to read it again. He's quoted as saying, we're here to build this team to compete to win championships. He has taken over play calling duties as Mike Loxley. And he said, and I quote, nobody ever said it would be linear. Today we took a step back. Well, you took about 10 steps back. We're going to find a way to turn this frustration into something positive and productive. Good luck with that, Locks, with USC coming into town next week, and they could be coming off a loss because they got Penn State this afternoon, number four in the country. So take that for what it's worth. And by the way, you're probably going to have more USC fans there than Maryland fans. And USC, by the way, is in California, thousands of miles away. Okay. Lausch was 10 of 18, 203 yards. He didn't turn the ball over. He played a wonderful, clean game. He made the plays when he needed to with his arm and with his legs. And Billy Edwards was 28 of 51 for 296 yards. He had an interception, so he didn't have his best stuff as well. Ty Felton, who leads the Big Ten, as you know, in receive yards, receiving yards. He returned, and he only had nine catches for 77 yards. He had a bunch of catches, but give Northwestern credit. They played a lot of man coverage, were physical with the at the line of scrimmage, and really tackled well. And when he did catch the ball, he didn't get much after it as far as yak and big plays. Wildcats, Northwestern did. They took care of the football, and they only held in Maryland. Wow, as total. I, I'm sorry. They only had 59 yards as a team, Maryland. They only run up for 59 yards, obviously playing from behind as well. And Northwestern's front seven, I got to give them a lot of credit. I didn't really mention them or was unfamiliar with them in my preview, but their front seven, very, very good, physical. They're back in while it was under pressure, under fire. They play hard. They play tough. They play physical, man-to-man defense, which I love to see in college football and football in general when everybody wants to be cute, play zone. You got to mix it up. But I love teams that play hard and it was physical man-to-man defense and bring pressure. That's kind of what I would do as a defensive coordinator, especially in college football. I'm going to get my hands on you. I'm going to be physical. And even if I get a penalty, it's only 15 yards. It's not always spot foul and like it is in the NFL. Their corners grew up tonight in Northwestern. They're coaching out coach Maryland. And how many times has that happened? Oh, probably almost every game this season. 
let's go back to Michigan State. Out coached. We can go back to whatever game you want to go to. We can go back to Ohio State last year or Michigan. They were out coached because they had that game won. Yeah, it was some turnovers, but I think also you can put coaching into that as well. And it's a four quarter game, folks. You can't just be good for the first, second quarter or be good for the third, fourth quarter. You gotta play you gotta play 60 minutes of football. Maryland. Maryland basically is 500. Second home loss in the second half schedule. As I mentioned, USC is coming in here for homecoming, 4 p.m. next week. Minnesota, they beat USC last week. Oregon, who has, not to mention, possibly the game of the year outside of Alabama, Georgia, against Oregon and Ohio State tonight in Beaver 10 shots, all the good people over there. Nike send free stuff, please. Rutgers, who they may win, they may lose today against Wisconsin, but they're going to fight. That's not going to be easy. Iowa, they have a big game today. They're going to be tough looking to get back to another Big Ten championship game. And, oh, by the way, top five perennial team playing for the Big Ten championship, Penn State, on the road. And they all entered this week 23-8. and eight. And to look like to get to six wins, you would need to win three of those. Now, which three are they winning? Because they're three and three, and they basically have to, what, out of their last, what, one, two, three, four, five, six games, they have to go three and three. I don't see three wins. Like I said, these teams are combined 23 and eight, and this will be their fourth straight bowl game. But we don't want a mail bowl. We don't want a, I don't know, Liberty Mutual Insurance Bowl or Outback Steakhouse Hawaii Bowl. Australia Bowl or What's the Matter You Bowl or the Snoop Dogg Smoke a Lot of Weed Bowl or whatever they're going to be doing this season because they got more bowl games than I can count them teams in college football. We don't want mayonnaise because they need mayonnaise poured, poured on them. They played like they were stuck in mayonnaise. They're not beating USC, I don't think. Minnesota, maybe that's a 50 50 game, but I don't think they're going to be able to go on the road and beat them the way they're playing because think if they lose, they lost this week. They lost to Indiana before the bye. They lose to USC. That's what, three straight losses coming in, basically, or to, to my knowledge, or what, two out of the last three? Yeah, it would be three straight. So three straight losses, then you go to Minnesota. Then you got Oregon on the road. That's two straight road games, Oregon going east to west. Then you got Rutgers at home, Iowa at home. Then you go to Penn State. Like I said, the only game I may see them winning – if, if if I'm going to be optimistic and say multiple, more than one, I could see Minnesota in, in, in Rutgers. But honestly, I think they split those if they get another one this season. And that would be crazy. If they lose out and they only end up with three wins, what would that be? Three and nine? Damn. Damn, that would be crazy. Somebody would really need to ask. Well, somebody would need to be held accountable. Somebody would need to be called to the front of the altar. Somebody would need to be Doing something. I, I think there's something that needs to happen if that if that does happen. I'm gonna say they do win at least one more to two more games. I'm gonna say this because I, I was big on them before the year. I thought maybe they can get nine just because of the schedule early on. I thought they maybe even could get to like six and zero right now. I thought they can win up until now, be six and zero. Be bowl eligible, win your Friday night Lakes game on the road, then you maybe could have the tailspin where you lose to USC. Then you maybe could have beat Oregon. I mean, not Oregon, could beat Minnesota. They could have gave you seven. You lose to Oregon, cool. You beat Rutgers, eight. You win either Iowa or Penn State, that'd be nine. And I maybe would say you beat Iowa because they can't score a lot. You get to nine and three. But no, Indiana is leading the Big Ten. Indiana is going to have a chance to be in conference championship contention. Northwestern has leapfrogged Maryland. Michigan State has already leapfrogged Maryland because they beat us head to head. I think the only team we're probably better than in the Big Ten right now is what? Maybe looking at the standings, UCLA. And and honestly, we don't play them this year. I wouldn't be surprised next year if we played them and they somehow beat us because Maryland has at least three or four games a year where they lay an egg. They literally lay an egg. Yeah, Maryland is last. Even Purdue, I don't even know if they're better than Purdue. Purdue, UCLA, maybe. 
but Maryland's in that bottom three. I didn't know that David Aker's son plays for Northwestern. He's their kicker. He's the son of Pro Bowler David Akers. And he made three field goals of at least 38 yards plus all four extra points as well. So David Aker's son is their kicker. Northwestern does have Wisconsin up next, so they could probably win that game. And then Maryland, like I said, they host USC for homecoming. And, you know, it's it's really, really sad. And I don't know. I, Luke Akers, that's his name, by the way. That's, that's, that is David Akers' son's name. But real quick at the box score, I'm going to try to look at that with you guys. Like I said, Maryland only rushed for 59 yards. Um, Yeah, Jake Lausch, 10 of 18, 203 yards, touchdown. We had Billy Edwards, 28 of 51. I don't like Billy Edwards throwing the ball that much. I think that's a little high for any quarterback, especially Billy Edwards, 296 at interception. Roman Hemby, 14 for 42. Nolan Ray, 5 for 12, 14 for 14 carries for five yards from Billy Edwards. A lot of those obviously probably were plays that were just blown up because the offensive line is terrible. Only 59 yards on 33 carries. It's just ridiculous. Prayed their 8 for 81. Felton 9 for 77. Sad to see that Ty Felton's wonderful season is being wasted here. But we do have Prather coming back. Smith Jr. had a big 27-yard reception, 2 for 43. Ray 1 for 18. Dylan Wade 1 for 17. But Billy Edwards had a fumble, Preston Howard, and Ricardo Cooper on the kick returns was ridiculous losing those. But Maryland, nothing really to speak of or even talk about as far as offense. And then defensively, they were given short fields, so they were easily able to give up points as well. The secondary struggled as well. Dante Trader Jr. didn't play, and it was definitely seen because the secondary has not taken the steps that I thought it would take by this part of the season. And honestly, they've, you talk about linear, they may have regressed. A lot of big plays by Lausch that I didn't expect to see, like with the Ravens we've seen with last week, like communication issues, as I mentioned with discipline, the focus wasn't there. The offensive line gave up three sacks. We know how bad they've been. A lot of scrambles, a lot of throws under pressure. Like I said, when he got blindsided, and that led to the touchdown, that was terrible. The guard, as he mentioned, Loxley said he missed the block. Yeah, yeah, it's it sucks. Isaac Bynum, Isaac Bynum was a guy who gave up the the clean blindside strip set, and maybe Bynum. I don't know if that's a award, but he's maybe been the best of the worst of the offensive linemen. But, yeah, it's, it's, it sucks. It, it sucks. Like I said, the play on special teams, we forget about it. Ricardo Cooper stumbled, and then he fumbled right back to the Wildcats, turned a 14-point deficit into a 17-point deficit. Then Cooper, Ricardo Cooper Jr., let the kickoff go and landed on the one-yard line, and then it bounced back. It was a near disaster there. It was ridiculous. My boy Braden Waslowski. Wasn't good. He he wasn't any better. Misjudged two punts. Took a good bounce to the one for the Wildcats. Well, the other one was nearly a safety. I'm like, what are you doing? And then it pretty much put the offense at their own 15. Loxley said, we're looking for consistency back there. We've had poor decision-making by our returners in the kick game. So, Loxley, we got to coach our guys better. We have to prepare them better. We have to get with the special teams guy. I do think Loxley needs to bring in a guy an offensive-minded young head coach somewhere out there. I don't know what school. I don't know what grad assistant programs they have at Maryland. Hey, you can hire me. I can help you out with the offense. I'll work for some NIL dollars. But, hey, I'll take some free merch, send free stuff, come on a podcast, do a couple of interviews, maybe give us some exclusives with some players or, or people down at College Park so we can talk about this with them, maybe get inside their heads. We don't ask for much here at the Flex Zone, but we'd love to work with you. Locks and help this team be something, especially with your quarterback coming to Malik Washington, who I'm high on next season. I think Wes Lowski is still the best of the group, so hopefully they can work on that. But Brian McPherson maybe was the MVP of the game. He's been having a great season, 
and he had three punts and then an average of 41 yards, two punts inside the 20, and one bounce to the five-yard line late in the first half, which allowed Maryland to try to double-dip, score, and get the ball back, which they did as well. Maryland does, on the Bryce back in an extra day of rest, Billy Edwards, a lot of these guys on offense who were banged up are going to need it to regroup, get in the cold tub, and get themselves back to where they need to be because that ain't it. That ain't it, boss. That ain't going to get it done. You're 3-3, three 0-3 three, oh three in the Big Ten, so that's done. Will you become bowl eligible? Highly unlikely, in my opinion, because you only got three. Like I said, at max, I could see maybe five. But like I said, when, you, when you're losing like this consistently and you're losing the close games, then you're getting blown out or whatever. When you lose like this consistently, it wears on you. And these guys know. And honestly, they, they know that they are already out of it. They know the best they make it sometime, somehow savage is a bowl berth, but a bowl that has no meaning, no feeling, no purpose. I talk about AEW having no feeling, no meaning, no purpose. Yeah, it's like going to a meaningless bowl game, having a meaningless match on TV with no story or no build. Like I said, at most I could see five wins and five and seven as a regression that's unacceptable. And that would need to cause, I think, some changes. We would need to get a offensive coordinator that Loxley trusts, that Loxley can work with, that Loxley can have the confidence in to call the right type of plays for this offense to thrive, to utilize the weapons they do have because offensively they have weapons. I really can't blame the weaponry. It's these men up front. The offensive line, which the penalties and the lack of knowledge of awareness and discipline to block and know your role and do your job and do it well. Maryland Maryland had, what, two sacks. But at times, you don't really see a pass rush either on the defensive line. You really don't. I mean, they did a good job against the run. They only had 80 yards Northwestern, but... You don't really see a pass rush a lot of times. You may see a sack here and there, and a lot of times those maybe are even just covered sacks or they luck into them. But a lot of times the pass rush goes MIA like this whole team does. And I don't have much confidence. Like I said, I, if they lose out, I wouldn't be surprised. If they get the five wins, I would. I could see it. That's the most optimistic thing I'm looking at. Fall in one game short of bowl eligibility. Could they win one of those two games? I thought they could win. They don't know. With four wins, I could. But I don't see him being bowl eligible, and I hope I ain't wrong because I don't want to come on here and say I told you so and tell you that this is what they are. They are who we thought they were and the great, great quote we know about. And it doesn't matter who they put it off into part. It's in shambles. Like I said, I think it's done. I don't think they have any guys they can put in to help make it better. They're kind of stuck with what they have. And what they have is shit. It's nothing. It's it's not good. Billy Edwards did miss some throws too, and that could be part of the, the offensive line struggles. He could be seeing goals. He could be under pressure. Preston Howard did have an opportunity on that fourth down play where Billy Edwards tried to escape, run around, threw it up, it hit his hands. It was a tough catch, I'm not gonna lie. Not easy, but I like Preston Howard, and I think they should use him more going into the rest of the season in 2025 because you're going to lose Ty Felton. But plug in a Preston Howard, middle of the field. You still have Preston, 6'3", over the top. You got my boy Kozlowski underneath in the slot. You got probably still going to have Hemby, I believe. You're going to have Ray. You're going to have Billy Edwards and Malik Washington. So I'd like to see an offensive coordinator that can, yeah, he'll be the junior, so he'll be back. I'd like to see an offensive coordinator that can use those things and maybe use other packages, other ways to when you're not when you're not good up front with an offensive line, you have to try to do things. You have to try to be creative. You have to try to get the ball out quick. We know these things. You have to try to run the football if you can, maybe utilize creativity. You have a dual threat quarterback. I don't see much RPO with this team. I don't see much read option. I don't even see an option. They could do some option ball. They could utilize other ways to kind of mask what this offensive line is. But when you're dropping back five, seven stop drops, and you got these long developing routes, Edwards so whoever's back there, quarterback, MJ Morris, because I wouldn't be surprised if we see him in these last six games because if Edwards may get knocked out of the game because he's getting knocked around, or they may not need to get Billy banged up anymore. 
And we may need Billy for next year. We don't want him to get hurt. And we want to see what we got in NJ Morris as well. Maryland special teams was terrible. The secondary wasn't very good. The pass rush pretty much disappeared. And somehow they were within one score at the end of the third. It was 17-7 going into the fourth. Like I said, that was pretty much a scoreless third quarter. The game kind of hit a low, a low, I guess, because the Dodgers and Padres had ended and the Dodgers were going to the NLCS. But 20 points in the fourth quarter, 17 off turnovers. You only managed three. You couldn't, couldn't score in the red zone, the fourth down drop. Yeah. It's, it's it's tough. Like I said, we're wasting a great season from Ty Felton, an all-time great Terps receiver season like we've seen with Stephon Diggs and DJ Moore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the defensive line, the defensive line was not disciplined on third down. They gave up a couple scrambles to Lausch. They didn't know their gap assignments. They rushed ignorantly and gave up wide open lanes for anybody with any type of mobility to walk through. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. I don't know. I don't know. I do I do put some of the blame. Like I said, I put Fox has got to take his, his bit of the blame. Billy Edwards, the offensive line has got to take their bit of the blame. The defense got to take their bit of the blame. And the special teams got to take a bite of that pie, too. It, it just was one big losing effort all the way around. Like I said, the wonderful majestic sounds of Dr. Disrespect. I want to take us home because we don't know why we even try anymore. But we're here. We give you the best value for the on YouTube and beyond. Make sure you subscribe if you made it this long. We appreciate you. It's God's favorite host. Got my red cardigan on. It's kind of my thing now. Hope you like it. Hope I look good. Hope I sound good. I'm trying to get over some lag network issues in the area where I live so i'm working on some things on the way thanks to mr bezos and his company that are going to hopefully boost the production in the flex zone the only place giving you sports maryland coverage football coverage how you want to when you need it tomorrow big game maryland battle of maryland the baltimore ravens and the washington commanders two of the best teams two of the best quarterbacks two of the best offenses go out of the mt bank stadium we will have the official baltimore ravens post game show tomorrow an all-star crew myself big rise the social media producer and joining us as well from the commander's perspective my boy from the flex zone the senior producer the commander laurian himself Carante joins Carante joins us for the baltimore Ravens post game show tomorrow evening so hit that bell and let you know when all of our videos come Let's know when everything we do comes out live to you first. To our subscribers, the Flex Zone family, first of football fans, we appreciate you. Subscribe. It's nothing. We, we appreciate it. We're growing. Thank you all. Welcome on new subscribers. Hit the like button. It helps us out tremendously. Leave us a thumbs up. Been at it for almost 30 minutes. I've been ranting all week. If you like this side of me, check out my AW rant. I went in for a few minutes talking about that. Disaster of a company. Kind of like how Maryland is right now. And tonight, but we'll be live tonight for AEW. We got some pro wrestling. We have AEW Wrestle Dream, which if you're into that, we'll be live tonight from that, 8 p.m. So join us for that. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell, sign off in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on Maryland. Will they be all eligible? Will they win another game? What's that going to be? All time game last week or last night. What do you think about Loxley? What do we do at offense, offensive line, defense, special teams? And what are you looking forward to saying? What is he's coming in next week? I have a preview for that. And as always, let me know what you're thinking. If you don't have any thoughts, sound off. Just leave your favorite emoji or tell me how I look, how I sound, and what you think as well. But it's God's favorite host. I'm getting ready to get out of here. I appreciate you if you made it with me this long. We're rocking out more Maryland content to come. And we got some things in the works. So stay tuned. The only place giving you sports how you want it, when you need it. Maryland Falls to Northwestern on Friday Night Lights. I'm glad I didn't decide to go to this damn game because they they went damn big. I would have left by the by the end of the third floor. I would have been normal. It was it was not their best showing. They took ten steps back tonight. Thankfully they didn't have a lot of a proof because it's Friday night. So they didn't have to witness that debacle. Hopefully you don't lose more recruits. I know we lost some guys recently, but 
We'll be doing some Maryland basketball content soon because the next week or two, getting ready for that season and their season is less than a month away. They are clean and approved. Seven new players, I believe. They have some shooting. Kevin Willis done some good job recruiting, working the quarter. I think they will be seeing that could be a good trench for the NCAA tournament. Maybe in that first quarter. They're not getting a lot of love in the last 30s. I think they're going to stick with a lot of people. A nice schedule, some local rivalries. Should be fun. Local competition. I'm getting out of here though. We'll be here this week for the Maryland preview of UFC. We got the Baltimore Ravens post game short mile tonight. AEW Wrestle Train Monday. Flash your podcast. Back again on Flex on Podcast. Only place to be sports. How you want it when you need it. I'm Kevin Holmes. I'm gone, yo. Have a good Saturday. Peace. I'll see you tonight for AEW Wrestle Train. We don't stop, baby. Keep going.